Hey everybody, this is Kyle with Simulation Lab here in Brooklyn, New York. Back again with another 3D Studio Max tutorial using TieFlow. Uh, today we're going to be um, doing something a little festive. Uh, it's uh, Mardi Gras, I think is this week, um, 24th I believe. Um, so anyway, we're going to be doing some um, Mardi Gras beads. Um, and uh, I, I put together this little test animation. Um, so we'll go ahead and give it a watch through here. So um, it's an animated character that I used, um, and the character uh, I actually purchased on. Um, actually, no, this is a free. This is a free uh, pre-rigged character on RenderPeople.com. Um, so you can pick up these; they're free, and they have a. Uh, they're rigged with a max biped, and um, and they actually have a uh, biped and a cat rig um, version as well, which is pretty cool. Um, the texture weighting. Uh, on the actual character's skin is get, needs a little work, um, but for the most part, uh, they're they're pretty good to do some simple stuff. And um, this tutorial actually started um, from a suggestion uh, from uh, uh, G A underscore A P suggested that um, you know simulating like a pearl necklace around a character's neck. Um, you know he said like the pearls staying in a, on a string while conforming to underneath geometry and affected by gravity. So that's basically what I did here. Um, so I thought that was like kind of an interesting, um, you know, little example of something fun to do. Um, so uh, the, the method that we're going to be using is very similar to the, like by the, my previous tutorial um, that we did. That was like um, uh, this ropes and knots. So it's, it's a little, it's pretty similar to that. But uh, it's, it's a little different because we're going to be spawning um, the necklaces like from a particular point. So we're not like pre we're not predefining like the the, um, the locations of the um, of the like the necklaces themselves. We're just going to be spawning them like once every couple sec like once every second or whatever. So let's jump in. Um, so I'm not going to be doing the tutorial with this character i mean if you want to, if you want to use the character you can you can download this character model and do you know the exact same thing i do i did and this um, but for this one we're just going to use like a generic cylinder or something for our collider object um, so let's jump into max so first things first unit setup uh, i'm going to use centimeters one unit equals one centimeter um, and then we'll go ahead and start with uh, creating a circle and I'll just like do it. Uh, uh, I mean, I'll do like a 18 centimeter radius, and I'll do like 15. I don't know. And we'll crank the uh, interpolation up. Maybe something like 18. I don't know. Um, we'll see how that works. And I'll drag that up a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and create just something for it to collide into, um, maybe like a cylinder. Um, that should be cool. And I'll increase the height a little bit. Yeah. And then maybe I'll like just zero that out. Like raise this up and we'll kind of like maybe rotate it turn on my angle snaps and rotate it like that and we'll position it to where like the uh, you know front part of the front face of the cylinder is like right underneath that so it'll kind of hang down and we'll kind of just raise all this up and we'll, we'll make like a little um something for it to collide into at the back so we'll like uh, right click i'll do a clone this and uh We'll just do a negative value for the height and a little bit on the radius. So it's like a little uh, pin sort of thing that it's going to collide into. All right, cool. So this should be pretty quick. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty quick little setup. Um, I'll go ahead and create a tie flow object in our scene. And 
and I'm going to be uh, sharing these project files. I'll, I'll share a link in the description below um, to where to, for a download download link, so you can download this uh, particular scene. But uh, if you if you follow it step by step, you'll you'll probably get you know very similar results. So um, okay, so now that we have that set up, I'm going to go ahead and birth um, some particles at frame zero, start and end zero, and we'll do like I'm not sure what this is going to be yet. So 60 something, we'll figure that out. Uh, set uh, our display to geometry, and then um, I do position object. And instead of faces, we'll do vertices in order. And we'll go ahead and pick our circle. And then I'm going to put on a shape operator. And set it to be a mid-res geosphere. OK, that's looking cool. And it looks like we need a little bit more, so I'm going to increase this up. Looks like 76 will do it for this circle. You just want to fill it. You don't want to make sure you want to make sure that, that, that you fill um, every vertice of the circle with a particle. Um, and you don't want any to overlap. So looks like 76 will work for me. Um, and then in our shape operator, I'm going to scale it up. I'm going to turn the uh, variation percentages to zero. I want to make them all the same size because that's how the uh, you know the um, um, Mardi Gras beads work. So basically, the way they look is usually, um, you know, there's like a visible little gap in between each bead of the necklace. So we're going to leave a little bit of a gap there. And then we're going to interpolate um, a tie splines operator between the uh, uh, beads to uh, fill in that gap and make a little string piece. So we'll do that as a post process. Um, Okay, so we have that set up, so that's looking cool. And what we can do now is uh, toss in a spawn operator here. And we'll do per second, and we'll do like two per second for now. We can increase that and have a bunch of them. And position from parent particle position, that's good. And timing, maybe we'll, instead of continuous, we'll do frame. Do zero to like 120 something. Um, okay, cool. So now if we scrub our timeline, nothing's nothing's really going to happen because they're just spawning over the top of each other. Um, and you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, in my uh, time configuration, I'm going to uh, do 300 for the frame count, just so it gives us 10 seconds of animation. Let's be able to simulate for 10 seconds. Let me I'll move that up a little bit. Okay, so after they spawn, what do they? What do we want to have happen? Well, we want to turn them into physics objects, right? So we'll do a physics shape. I'll turn my display operator to geometry. So plug that in, and then keep all these settings the way they are, and um, do physics bind. And I'm going to set it to rigid joint. And I'll set enable collisions on. And then down under proximity bind, I think I'm going to set this to like two, max binds two. And I'm going to keep all the rest of this the same, I think. Well, we might have to come back through here and tweak some stuff, but um, yeah. And then last uh, thing to set up here is the physics collider. So we'll go ahead and add both of our cylinders. Um, and then, you know, to turn that on, you can display hull. So um, that gives us a pretty clean uh, series of hulls to, uh, to collide against. So that'll work for that'll work for us. And then we can, uh, we can go ahead and see how this sims out. And that's pretty much working. The beads are really loose, so what we're going to want to probably do is... Um, Increase our sim sub steps a little bit, so that not too wiggly. Um, and under mains, well, under physics, um, it will do like a ten. See how that works. Let's see. 
Cheers. Hey, buddy. Okay. Um, so that's looking pretty cool. That's looking looking like it's uh, it, it might work for us. Um, it's actually pretty satisfying when they all line up like that. <laughs> Cool. Okay, so now that we have that set up, um, one other thing we could do real quick is uh, set up um, set up a material ID operator, and we'll set that to cycle. So we'll just have like different colored bead necklaces drop down, and uh, just real quick um, set up this multi sub object material. I'll discard the old one, and we'll name this uh, neck. Glasses. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to probably use F-Storm for this. Um, I'm probably not going to end up rendering this out. Um, But just for uh, to the sake of the tutorial, we'll just kind of stick with F-Storm. Um, you guys can feel free to convert this to whatever you want. Uh, but I'll just I'll set up a, a couple simple little materials just so we could see the different colors that it's generating. So I'll do like a, you know, let's do like the Mardi Gras colors. It's like, it's like a purple, I think. And it's like, um, copy this down. Do purple, we'll do green. Okay. And yellow. Or orange? Is it orange? Yeah, something like that, right? Yeah. And then we'll do a blue. Okay, just real quick. Cool. So we'll stick with four colors. Number of materials, four. All right, cool. So now that we have that ready, um, do cycle, do like one to four. Five. Keep a uh, change frame every half uh, half frame. Um, all right, and so now we have that. Just select our typhal object, apply that. We don't need that anymore. So now, if we sim this out, they should be spawning different colors um, in a cycle. So they'll kind of like. It looks like every. Okay, so we could probably switch this down to like every, like change every um, every one frame or something. I don't know. I don't know if that's really gonna have make much of a difference, but we'll see. Yeah. So now they cycle all, through all four colors and then they repeat. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then the la really the last step for this is to uh, set up our tie splines operator. So let me see tie splines, spline paths, and we're gonna um, do physics bindings and uh, create new. Cool. And then in our stack, I'm gonna turn those on, um, and then they're not gonna be visible until. They're only visible on the spawned objects. This is um, the, the uh, initial um, location. We can we can even turn that off. We don't even need to see that. Um, so that, that way they just appear from nowhere. Um, and then in our radius, we could turn that down. I might do like, yeah, 0.2. Yeah, 0.2 would work. So that gives you like that necklace, necklace effect. And all of this is parametric at this point. So basically we could do a turn that down a little bit and I might just increase uh, the size of these a little bit yeah something like that oh boy and that just broke it probably because I have too many now there we go cool 68 So many beads. Cool. 
and if we want the actual beads so all the tie splines are working there you can see they're generating the spline meshes for each necklace so that's working pretty pretty nicely um, and so you know from here what we could do is we can add like a bunch of them so you can like if you want to spawn more of them you could do like four per second or something and uh, um, it, in order for them to appear for the beads themselves the little spheres to appear in our render we'll just uh, toss in a mesh render um, set it to render only and then what we could do here is um, export out our cache okay so we can uh, pick a particular location and uh, I already set up a little folder here cache toot so we'll save that there and then I'm gonna save um, what do we do frame 120 so they spawn up until frame 120 so I might I might uh, sim this out to like 150 or something um, okay cool and then we can generate the cache files but before we do that we're gonna in geometry settings we include include spline paths geo um, and then if we generate that okay so that uh, finished exporting so I'll go ahead and disable the flow I'll move this out of the way and we'll kind of see what we got so that sims super quickly it's nice and cached out so that gives us a big pile of beads bead necklaces so that's pretty cool so that's effectively the same uh, method that I used to, to, to generate this I played with the size of the beads a little bit um, and the and I, I just you know the the animated character mesh was um, you know pretty simple to set up I just you know set up a simple little animation for her just like looking around um, I was gonna do something a little bit more with this scene maybe add to it and um, maybe I was gonna like have her dancing around with the necklaces on or something but I don't know I, I just figured um, the experiment was to get the spawned necklace sim down um, so I, I think I got pretty close with that so I was I was happy with the way this turned out it's pretty simple um, so yeah that's effectively how I did that and like I said I'll uh, I'll be sharing this seam file obviously it's a pretty simple little tie flow setup um, but I'll share the download link in the description below um, and uh, hopefully that'll get you started making something cool um, but yeah uh, if you guys have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below if you have any uh, suggestions uh, for how to do this one differently or suggestions for future tutorials please let me know um, and uh, yeah I hope you uh, I hope you enjoyed it if you if you liked the tutorial please smash the like button and subscribe for more um, got a bunch of other cool ideas coming up um, so stay tuned all right guys thanks so much for watching